Hi, I'm Charlie Thorburn. Welcome to Mordor Gun Dogs. We're going to do a follow on this week from last week where we I showed you a video of, and the week before, we showed you a video of young, just young Labradors just starting off on their journey of being a silly little puppy to a really nice, well behaved dog. So we showed you one of Arky's boys, and then we showed you, and just, just on that note, we had a, an Instagram post that did loads and loads of views, and it was a puppy going from zero weeks to 10 weeks or eight weeks. And that boy in the first video was that puppy. So just for any of you who follow our Instagram, you can, you can uh, see how he's progressed. Uh, then we did a slightly older puppy last week, and then this week we are doing the sister of the older boy from last week, but she's a little bit further on in her training. Now, the reason she's a little bit further on is just that she just ticked some boxes and we got her out. One of my crew got her out quite young and uh, she's just a very, very biddable little dog. She's called Sooty. She's going to a gentleman who found us from our YouTube videos, which is amazing. This will be our first dog that we sold through the YouTube channel. Um, so he came to see us with his stepfather and, uh, and they bought Sooty. And what they're wanting is a really nice dog. They've got a nice small holding, a uh, really nice dog that can be a lovely pet, family dog in their, in their house, out and about. But he wants to be able to do something really fun with her. So we're going to train her to be a gun dog, even though she's not necessarily uh, going to become a gun dog and going to get used. But he'll do dummy training and he'll give the dog a real job and a real purpose. And people often ask me, oh, you know, if I get one of your dogs, does it have to be a gun dog? The answer is no, but any dog has to have a job. Okay, they have to have a purpose, and a dog that doesn't have a purpose is a bored dog, and a bored dog is a dog that uh, messes around. It's like a bored person or a bored kid. You know, they, they're much more likely to get themselves into trouble. So this is Sooty. Sooty's five months old. Her mum is Beaver. Her dad is a dog called Jake from Yorkshire. Um, and uh, where's she at? Well, you saw last week the guys, the little puppy, sort of vaguely learning about, he about walking under heel. So we're about a week later, and what we're doing is we're just concentrating on that nice heel work. Now I've got a tennis ball in my hand, okay? So I'm just keeping her focused. If I need to, I show her the tennis ball and I'm watching her all the time. And one of the things that I can't stress enough to you guys at home is if you watch me or any of my crew trading dogs, their eyes are always on the dog. So occasionally we'll glimpse up to see the dangers ahead or see someone else coming or, or to keep an eye and make sure we don't walk into a fence. But basically, we're, we're just looking at the dog all the time. And if we're looking at the dog, we're like the teacher looking at the student. And if your teacher's looking at you, then you're more likely to look back at them because eye contact encourages eye contact. Sooty. So we, every time we say her name at the moment, what we're looking for is her engagement. So she's looking around elsewhere and we say her name and bang, she looks straight at us. So what we're really teaching her is her name and a little bit of heel work. And you may think your dog knows its name, okay, but does it really? Or is it just because you've got a biscuit and you've probably got three or four different pet names for it and, you know, little nicknames and stuff like that. But at this age, and I do as well with my older dogs, but at this age, I want to be really clear that every time I say the dog's name, they look at me in exactly the same way if one of my team or one of my kids or someone walked past and I said their name, they're walking along, I say their name and they look at me and go, yes, dad, or yes, Charlie, or yes, boss, or whatever. Whatever the, whatever the answer is, but it's, it's engagement. So their name means nothing more than just, that's you I'm talking to. Now, once the person looks at me, so they're walking along and I say, Freddie, and Freddie looks at me, and I say, Freddie, can you just go up there and close that gate? Yes, dad, no problem, and he runs up and shuts the gate. But that word Freddie is just to get his attention. That's his name, the, the invitation for him to engage with me, and then I have a question afterwards. When you watch yourself, or certainly other people out in the park, what you'll hear, and I'm not going to use her name here, I'm going to continue on with the Freddy. Imagine there's a dog called Freddy. They're saying, Freddy, Freddy, uh, Freddy, Freddy, no, Freddy, Freddy, come here, Freddy, Freddy, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, Freddy. Good boy, Freddy, well done, Freddy. And they say the name over and over and over again. And if you put this into human context, if I walk into my, into my kitchen and my, and my son is there with my wife, I walk in, and I say, hello everybody, and I maybe say to my wife, hi Antonia, how was your day? What have you been up to? And she goes, I had a great day, and I said, is there any chance I could have a cup of tea? And she said, yes, would you like a biscuit? And I'd say, that's fabulous, and everyone's smiling. What I don't do is I don't walk into the kitchen and go, Antonia, Antonia, can I have a cup of tea, Antonia? Antonia, is only biscuits, Antonia, 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 because everyone thinks I'm bloody crazy, which I would be. But 
you all do that to your dogs. So don't repeat the dog's name because the more you repeat it, the more the dog goes, oh God, I wish that Antonia or that Freddy or that whoever would just answer and then this guy would shut up. Okay, we want to just keep that name really special to them. So it's, you say their name and they're like, yes, and then we do something straight away afterwards. So make sure every time you say your dog's name, they're getting something positive afterwards. That can be anything from saying sooty and giving her a little tick, a little tickle on her chin, sooty and giving her a biscuit, walking through a gate, walking through a door, allowing her off the lead, asking her to come, showing her that you're running away. But there's something positive. It's not Saturday, leave that alone. It's not a negative. It's always got to try and be a positive. So make sure you say her name. She looks at you and she's got a reason to look at you. Now, if she's already looking at me, she's already engaged. I don't need to say her name. So her name would only be used if she was looking the other way. But because she's already looking at me, I just say heel and off we go. Now you can see her heel work is already coming on pretty well. She's pretty glued to my leg. I'm keeping my body language turned towards her. If I do that from the front, so my legs are pointing that way, but my body is down towards her. So I'm always facing the dog, okay? And then it keeps her on the right side because, which is actually the left side, just to confuse everyone, keeps her on the correct side. Because I want her to be there. I don't want her to be over here. I don't want her to be out in front. I want her to be on my left looking at me. And the more I encourage that by facing her, you see, when she goes to the wrong side, I encourage her back and then my body language and my, you know, positivity is here on the right. So she gets a little correction, a little tug for going onto the wrong side. And then we go back to the, the correct side. Um, now, give you some little tips and, and ways to make this work better for you. We're just gonna move over to that fence. So we regularly use a fence or a wall, something solid that the dog can't get through. And I'll use it for two different things. If I'm having trouble with a dog who's constantly wanting to walk on my right hand side and I want them to walk on my left, I will walk like that, so close to this fence that there isn't space for a dog. So she only has one option and that is to walk on the left hand side because I can't, she can't get to this side. And I will walk all the way around the pen in an anti-clockwise motion so that she can only be on the side I want her to be. She has no choice. Now, training dogs is about creating habits. So if you constantly only allow them to walk on side, one side, they are only gonna walk on one side. If you allow them to chop and change, then you've got, you're gonna have a problem because they're gonna be going there, they're gonna be going there, and then they think, well, if I can go that side and in behind and out that side, then I can go slightly in front and slightly to the left. And, and your parameters become too broad for them. They, wanna keep, they want it to keep, be kept really simple and really easy. If I've got a dog that's prone to pushing out too far out, so they're walking on the left, but they're too far out, then again, Sooty, come on, come on, come on Sooty. Then again, I will, Sooty's bored already. I'm gonna walk with her between the fence and me. So she can't push that way. She can only pull ahead or go slow and I'm just narrowing the parameters. Now this isn't something we do for months and months and forever. This is just something we do for a, for a short period of time until she gets the hang of it. So those are just some little tricks. Now around my yard in my house where my car's parked and kind of kids run around, there's a, a two sides are a wall and then two sides of my house. And I can just do exactly the same thing in here, up there just on a bigger scale and in a different environment. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find once I've got them doing it in here, then I'll go to a bigger field, I'll go into the yard, I'll go down a path, whatever, but I'm always thinking about how I can utilize that fence to my advantage. And what you find is if you go, you go around in a loop once, the dog sort of clocks it and then they do quite nicely. It's not very often that I have to do this over and over day after day, but there are sometimes, especially a naughty dog that's maybe coming here for some corrective training. But with a little girl like this, it's just, that's just a little tip to help keep her on the, on the correct side that you want her to walk on. Why do we teach them to walk on the left? The reason we teach them to walk on the left is because historically my gun would have been in my right hand over my, over my arm there. And if she'd been on the right, she'd have got bonked on the nose by it. Whereas if she's on the left, she's out the way. Now I'm actually left-handed. So the whole theory of that doesn't apply. I, I should actually teach them to walk on the right. But I don't because everyone in the world of gun dogs, everyone sort of expects the dogs to be on the left-hand side. So I hope that's, um, that's given you a little bit of help. Now, Sooty's got terribly bored. 
Come on then, Chucky. So we just, we've got to remember, let them off, let them have a bit of fun. But even when they're having a little bit of fun, I'm just encouraging that healing, okay? I'm still just walking along, facing, facing her, facing my left, and encouraging her to walk along at heel. Good girl, good girl, heel, heel. Now you'll see lots of people who tell you to walk along and every time they're in the right place, give them a treat, give them a treat, give them a treat. And as any of you who've learned from watching my videos, we don't really do treats, but I do, re I do reward them, okay? And she wants that ball, so I will, when they get a bit bored, I will pull that ball out of my hand, throw it up in the air, get her attention and let her have a, have a retrieve. Good girl. Now she's going to be silly. So the same thing we did last week with her brother is we just head straight out the gate. Come on then. Sophie, come on then. Come on then. Good girl. Sooty, sooty. So she's just been a little bit of a monkey. And Megan is doing a lot of, Megan who works for she's doing a lot of her training. And she said, oh, she's really good, but she doesn't bring the ball back very well. So um, Megan's just learning as well. So we're teaching her and uh, as well as teaching Sooty. So um, I tried running away out of the pen like I did last week with the, her brother. But the problem was Sooty was quite happy hanging out with Ian, holding the camera. Um, so I've come back in, I've crouched down and I've just tried a different method. You know, this is the thing about training dogs is... is Everyone goes, oh, what book should I read? The thing is, you read a book that tells you how to do it one way, and there are so many different ways in so many different scenarios that you need to adjust your training all the time. And if you even just think about the number of videos I've made already, which I don't know, is maybe 15 or something, I don't even know, um, and how much information and how much talking I've done in those times, and we haven't even touched the sides on how much training is, you know, all the different training, all the different things we can do, the little quirks, the little different things we come up with and the reasons for it. So you've got to be really open to, uh, to constantly be learning. And I'm, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years plus, 25 years, and I'm still learning. I still get new ideas and new, new people give me new ideas and I watch ideas and I come up with ideas just sitting at home thinking about these things. Just try and be imaginative. That's what this game's all about. That's what any game is all about. It's just trying to come up with new ideas and things that work for you. So we'll leave that, we'll leave Sooty with that because she's going to get bored if we go too long and that's another key thing, she's five months old, she's going to get bored, okay, um, and as are you. So I hope you've all learnt something and I'm sure we'll see Sooty again on, uh, on future, future videos as she develops over the next year. And remember, you get out what you put in.